Good morning, everyone. We welcome those of you who are worshiping with us this morning by way of uh, watching us uh, rather than being able to be with us, but you are with us. You're with us in your spirit, and we are with you also in spirit and in love. And speaking of that, next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. And I want to invite everyone who is viewing right now to join us and, and be a part of this experience of celebrating uh, the Lord's Supper. It'll be next Sunday morning at this time. And we hope those of you near and far will feel welcomed and know that you uh, are, are part of our family through our relationship with you in Jesus Christ. And we hope that you will know that that is a welcome to join with us in the Lord's Supper. That's next Sunday morning, so please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, also, it's not going to be long before Presbytery is going to be meeting. Uh, it'll be meeting in October. I believe it's on the 16th uh, at the New Hope Church. So please be in prayer uh, for the delegate from this particular congregation, along with others who will be gathering for uh, this Presbytery meeting. Pray that God's spirit will be upon us all, that he'll give us enlightenment and direct our minds and our hearts uh, and the decisions that are made, that they will go to him for his glory and they'll accomplish his purpose here in this world. Uh, among other things happening today, today is a special day I know for Pat Pierce because today is her birthday and Pat turns 39 years old today. <laughs> 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 Doesn't look a day over 38, does she? <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, Pat, uh, I don't think she would mind me saying it's 89 years old today, and uh, but still looks much younger. And uh, we're so glad you are doing well, and we hope you have a blessed day, not only this day, but for many, many days to come. Uh, and we know you will in our Lord. Uh, but again, it's, it's good to have each one of you with us today. Looking forward to uh, the, uh, our special uh, baptism that will be taking place in our service in just a little while. Uh, looking forward to uh, having Miss Lydia brought before us and baptized and her name put on the roll of baptized children here at the, in the Rocky Ridge Church. But let us prepare our hearts for worship, remembering uh, while every day is a day in which the Lord has made, this day in particular uh, is a blessed day because it offers us the opportunity to worship uh, together. Uh, our Lord. So let us rejoice and be glad in him as we are in this day that he has given us. Join me in prayer. Father, we do rejoice in you and we give thanks for this occasion. We're grateful for those who are able to come out and be a part of our service. We're grateful for all those who have the opportunity wherever they are and ought to become a part of this worship experience with us in this time. And we pray again the oneness of your spirit and that is drawing us together, each of our hearts, to one another, that we might worship, loving each other. But we've come mainly, our Lord, as one circling our hearts and our minds about you, to worship you. And we pray that you will welcome our worship, uh, that you will accept this as our offering of love toward you today. Bless us, Father, as we come to bless you, your name, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory and the praise in him. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, if you would like to stand and join us, if you're able, we would love for you to join us for this time of worship.
Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. We boast in the hope of glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that our sufferings produce perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only this is so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation.
time, I'd like the uh, Acacia family to join me here at the altar. morning. Let us hear the words of the gospel written by Mark. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And then he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Let us pray. Father, even so, at your invitation, we bring this child to you, knowing that she needs your hand upon her, as we all do upon our lives asking that you would bless her in this occasion and bless her family for their obedience to you. We look to you, Father, and all to work within her life as we have already witnessed you working in our lives. To the place in which she, as she grows in knowledge and understanding and in wisdom, and you will be a central part of that which she comes to know and she comes to love. Bless her family, Lord, in their faith in you uh, for this reason. Help them to do what they must do to be a part of that which you include in blessing her life. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Eric, Amanda, the Bible instructs you to keep God's word and to love him with all your heart. Furthermore, you are to teach God's word and his ways carefully to your children both day and night through the Bible's lessons and by your own example as set forth in Deuteronomy in chapter 6. And the Bible also commands you with this encouragement that if we train up a child in the way that he should go, that when the child is older, they will not depart from it. Eric, Amanda, for as much as this child is now presented by you for baptism and is thus consecrated to God and to his church, I remind you that it is your part and duty to see that she is taught the meaning and the purpose of this holy sacrament and that she be instructed in the principles of our holy faith and the nature of the Christian life, that she be trained to give reverent attention upon the public and private worship of God and the teachings of the holy scriptures, and that in every way, by precept and example, you shall seek to lead her to the place where she is able to give her full heart, loving God, and serving him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you solemnly promise to fulfill these duties so far as in you lies with the Lord being your help? And I challenge the congregation to, that our Lord Jesus Christ ordered his church to teach and to nurture those who are baptized. And as long as we have this family with us, you will lift up Lydia and her parents in prayer. As you have the opportunity, you are to offer words of encouragement to them and to her alike strengthening them in their ties with God and with this household of faith. Will you be willing to do so? Father, we have made our vows before you and unto you and to one another, trusting again through the help of your Holy Spirit, we will fulfill fulfill these vows to your glory and for our good through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's through his name we pray. Amen. Eric, Amanda, what is the name of your child? Lydia Marie Ortiz. Will you pray, present her forward? Thank you. Lydia Marie Ortiz.
I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Eric, Amanda, uh, here is a certificate from uh, marking this occasion. There are other bulletins within there, like the one I've used here, so you can share them with your family and they can have them as a keepsake. May God bless you. May he give you strength, the knowledge, and the ability to be able to carry forth that which he has instructed you to do for his glory. For Miss Lydia's good, and, and we pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may return to your seats. As we prepare to turn our thoughts to God again in prayer, certainly we want to remember uh, the Arkiza family and our prayers this morning in light of that uh, which has taken place here at the altar. Uh, but there's others that uh, we need to be praying for as well. Uh, let me give you a couple that come to mind. Uh, Basil Smith, uh, actually, uh, we certainly want to pray for him, but for Kay as well, and for all the uh, Smith family. Basil's in the uh, hospital at St. Vincent's Hospital. He, is, uh, he has cancer and uh, they are uh, trying to take care of a, a, a problem that uh, they ran into to prepare him for the treatment of this cancer. So uh, pray for, for the, the complication here uh, for the treatment for the cancer that will uh, ensue afterward. Uh, and for Kay as she uh, tries to be an encouragement and a help to her husband during all of this time. And through our prayers, we will be a further encouragement for them all. Also remember with me in prayer of uh, Miss Nina Strickland. Uh, Miss Nina is going into the hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital again uh, tomorrow, uh, and she is going to have surgery. She has a, two nodules, I believe, on her thyroid. Uh, they look suspicious. They, they uh, do not know for sure what those nodules are uh, other than being nodules, but they do feel the need to remove them. So this will be done tomorrow in surgery. Remember her and Bill also in your uh, prayers with me uh, today. Uh, and those are the two that I, I've been made aware of. I'm sure there's probably others that we could be uh, remembering in prayer this morning. Uh, remember one another uh, every time we gather together or we think about those who are gathering with us, uh, uh, not ex actually here, amongst us but very much here with us in spirit let us as we think of them hold them up in our thoughts and our prayers as well uh, join me at this time as we pray father we come yet before you again with grateful hearts and all rejoicing in you giving thanks to you acknowledging you lord your grace and your goodness recognizing also that we are incomplete in every way without you that you have sent your son to make us whole not by, by dying on the cross for our sins, not only recovering us, though, in the sense of, uh, of being able to restore us to you, uh, spiritually speaking, but also restoring us in terms of our mental, our emotional, and our physical uh, being as well, making us whole and working in us day in and day out so that we become more and more like him according to your plan for your glory. And uh, we thank you for uh, doing these things on our behalf. And we pray for those that are struggling right now, uh, that are having a hard time in the midst of uh, the pandemic. Uh, but even for things that are going on, not necessarily because of the pandemic, but uh, with, uh, even disregarding it, still there are problems and there's needs that, ongoing, that are ongoing. We lift up to you those that are uh, hurting in this manner, praying again for the difference that you are able to make and only you can make whether you're working through others or you're working apart from all others, we look to you to make them whole, even as we look to you to make us and keep us whole as well. We pray now that you will uh, pour your spirit up upon us as we are, re are ready to welcome your word into our lives. Uh, we ask that you uh, help us to be able to discern its meaning for us today. Uh, as always, Lord, I look to you to enable me to be able to I preach the word that you've placed upon my heart for your people. I trust not only that you enable me to speak as I uh, am, uh, need to be able to speak, 
but that through the Holy Spirit, uh, you bring forth the message very clear to those who are hearing it. Uh, it's not so much dependent on me saying the right words, but my willingness and obedience to declare your word. I pray that you'll honor this by uh, making sure they hear what they need to hear. And all through the working of your Holy Spirit, as he whispers in each ear, as he brings the message to our hearts, may our hearts embrace that message. To you again, we give the glory and the praise for all of this through Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. I would like you to take your Bible in hand and turn with me to the New Testament this morning, where I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians. I'm reading out of the first chapter. And, and I would encourage you, uh, and especially this is not a, a long letter, uh, to read the entire letter of Ephesians sometime later on. Uh, I, I think the, the meaning of what is being shared here in this first chapter will be even more so uh, a blessing for your life. So please keep that in mind. Uh, but at this moment, we're going to look in chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 15 through 23. Verses 15 through 23. For this reason, ever since that I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything and every way. That is the reading of God's word for the people of God. Now, I think most of us here today are aware that some shoes have eyes. And I'm sure again that most of us here today are aware that a, a needle has an eye, uh, that a hurricane has a big eye, very big eye. And uh, also a potato can have as many as six to eight eyes. But are you aware also that your heart has eyes? We just read about it here in this first chapter of, of Ephesians. Now, I'm not sure who the author of this particular song is, but I know I've heard it by, sung by Michael W. Smith, among others. And uh, I'm not going to attempt to sing it myself so you can be at ease, but I am going to share with you some of the words of this song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Every time I read this 18th verse here in this first chapter, I think of this song. And they thought of this song because I'm sure they read this 18th verse in this first chapter to the Ephesians. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. <coughs> Now, I will admit to you this morning, I, I ran into a bit of a problem when I was researching and preparing uh, this, this message. Uh, and what I discovered in my research is that the word that is being used in the Greek here that is translated as heart is best translated as mind. The word for heart is, is the word cardia, 
And the word actually that is being used in this particular sense is dianola, uh, which does mean mind. And, all it's, and it speaks of our understanding, our reasoning, our, our intellect, if you will. And, uh, and Paul uses the word several times in his letters to the churches that he writes to, writes to. In fact, there's several times that he mentions for us to have the mind of Christ. And it comes from the word dianola. So I wonder, you know, why, why would the word dianola that is used here be translated as heart rather than as mind? And there's a good reason for that. And all that I found out anyway, and all there is no word in the biblical Hebrew, Hebrew, uh, in the biblical Hebrew for mind. And uh, in fact, the the, uh, the the men and women of God of old, and all that they thought your intellect, your reasoning, and your understanding uh, was something that was found in the heart. That the heart was the center of your thinking and your reasoning. So what I'm going to do today in my message is is very simple. I'm going to use the word heart. It, you can think of the word mind if you wish and you can substitute it, but I'm going to talk about the eyes of your heart as it's mentioned here in Ephesians chapter 1. And, and, and one of the things that I, I thought about as, as I was preparing this, why would your heart need eyes to begin with? And there were three things that came to my mind that I found the scriptures seemed to support. And those are the things that I'm going to impress upon you today as well. I think that we, uh, we need the, for the Lord to open up the eyes of our heart, if you will, so that we may be able to know him in a more personal way. And that's the, the first thing that I want to impress upon you. And uh, we need him to open the eyes of our hearts so that we're able to know him in a more personal way. When Paul is writing to the Corinthians... In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 4, he said, he said uh, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds, if you will, of those who don't believe, to the point that they are unable to see the glorious light of the gospel. They don't understand this message about the glory of God. How sad it is to think that there are many in this world whose uh, the eyes of their heart or their mind, if you will, have been blinded by Satan so that they cannot understand this wonderful message that is offered to them, a message of hope, of redemption, and yet they do not see it. Therefore, they do not accept it when it is offered to them. But because you have, because you have received Jesus Christ as the, when the gospel was presented to you, and I'll Paul, I go back to verse 15, and he says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. God wants you to have a, a deep, deep, relationship with him he doesn't want you to be satisfied with knowing him as you first knew him and uh, when you received his son Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and your Savior but he wants a much deeper relationship with you than that there's something that comes to my mind in, in, in the Old Testament when uh, God was uh, frustrated with his people because of their continual rebellion and, and no matter what he did in the way of miracle after miracle, and while it seemed to satisfy them for the moment, that's all it did. Because a little bit later on when something else came up that was difficult for them to deal with, they became, uh, they became very upset again with Moses and with God and, and, be, uh, and were groaning and complaining. God finally said to Moses, he said, you know what, I'm going to send an angel from this point on with y'all and he is going to take you on to the promised land as I had promised myself that you would that I would do he's going to do that and see that you get there and you receive the uh, the uh, blessings that I offered to you but I'm not going to go with you and I like how Moses responded to this and I I want to think he was responding not only in his own behalf but on behalf of the people Lord if you don't go with us we're not going we're not going 
It doesn't matter. That, uh, uh, you know, we don't need just angels, do we? While angels may be good in, term, in terms of wh who they are in the service of God and even of God's people, we want more than angels. Even though the, the angels themselves might be able to work miracles and whatever, we need more than miracles. And while we may get to where you're sending us and the blessings await us there, we need more than just blessings. We need you. We need you because you're really the one who's the heart of all of this. And it's, life is more than miracles and blessings and angels and, so, and, and whatever. It's God and knowing him and having a personal relationship with him. There was a man by the name of Don, and I, I want to say his name is Moen. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not. It's M-O-E-N. Uh, but he, he wrote a song. And you may be familiar with this song. It's based upon what I just shared with you in Moses' experience and how he responded to God. May your presence go with us is the name of the song. If your presence doesn't go with us, Lord, we don't want to leave this place. Lord, we need you near as we go from here to lead us by your love and grace. May your presence fill us every day. May your spirit lead the way. Lord, to you we call. Let your glory fall and may your presence go with us. If we have found favor in your sight, show us your ways, O oh Lord, because we want to know you and to live in your light for all our days. Show us your ways. We have our hopes and we have our dreams, but we cannot go where you do not lead. Lord, to you we call. Let your glory fall. And may your presence go with us. I think that should be the desire of every man and woman of God. That, that we should want what Paul prayed for as he prayed for the church at Ephesus. And I think he would be praying here for the Rocky Ridge Church and for all God's children. Is that, we may, uh, that God may give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know him better. We don't want to just know his works. We don't want to know just his will for our lives. We want to know him. And we want to know his ways. We want to become more and more like him. So, Lord, our prayer is this, that you would open the eyes of our heart so that we may know you in a more personal way. And then the second thought that came to my mind was this. We need you, Lord, to open the eyes of our heart so that we may know you in a more purposeful way as well. Not just a personal way, but a, a purposeful way. Look again at what he says in verse 18. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I like how the message uh, uh, you know, uh, translates this, and it takes a little bit of freedom, but I think they got the understanding of the words here when the writer put these words down for verse 18. It means knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear so that you may see exactly what he is calling you to do. I think it's important that we have a, a clear understanding and that our hearts and minds are focused on whatever it is, what God is calling us to do. And I think part of what he's calling us to do is also part of what he is calling us to become as well. And when I think of God's purpose for my life and yours, I'm thinking about it in such a way that it's not like some mystery that is waiting to be solved. I'm not going into some of those other little details or, or specific details that may touch your life as over against someone else's life, but I think every life is touched in this way in terms of what God's will, what his purpose is for us. It's to know him, and it's to grow in him through his son, Jesus Christ, becoming more and more like him. And it's to show him through the help of the Holy Spirit and to show him to the world that the world may know him as well. And this is accomplished with God's help. I believe the greater experience of faith is not so much in finding all the answers to all the questions that we come up with in life, but simply to start with the basics. 
and to trust him in those basics and to obey him in accordance with the basics. We would be so much wiser if we did. We would be so much more with understanding. We would know more than we realized that we could know. And even though we still don't have all the answers, we would have the primary answers that matter in that moment for our lives. So I would say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart so that I may know you in a more purposeful way. So that I may understand that, you're, that what you've called me to do is not, so, not some mystery hidden from me. It's simply to begin with the, step, with the first step today, trusting and obeying what you reveal to me through your word. And then the third and last thing that comes to my mind's heart is this. When he says, praying to open the eyes of our heart, I think he's saying that so that we may know him in a more powerful way. A more powerful way. Listen again what he says in verses 19 and following. In his incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come power of which there is nothing like. Nothing can be compared to it. It cannot be measured in terms of what we can understand. It's beyond all of that. It's the very power that, that, he, that he says raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the power of God at work in your life and in my life. And when we live our lives as if we are depending and must depend upon ourselves and our own power, period, and all, we are living a life that is much less than the life that he has intended for us to live. To live a life by the power of the flesh is an insult. And all, it's an insult. It's a sin. Because God means for us to walk in his spirit and to understand the power of the spirit. And all, not only the power to change us, but the power also to enable us to live according to that change to become what it is that he has revealed we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think about this, and, and, and the reason it comes to my mind is because what good would God's presence, presence and purpose be if I didn't have the strength to walk in his ways? I mean, while I, I want to know his presence, and I certainly want to know his purpose, how can I hope to fulfill that which is his purpose for me, without that he gives me the power to do so. And yet I'm reminded in the next chapter of, a, uh, uh, well, actually not in the next chapter of Ephesians, but in the second chapter of Philippians, that God has made it possible for us to do so because it is God who works in us and also through us, both to will and to be able to act in accordance with his good purpose for our lives. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, it never reverts to us to the point where God is left out. It never reverts to us to the point that God somehow becomes second place in light of what his, all of this is about. It's always through him, because of him, and through him that we are becoming the people that we're supposed to be. But we don't always see it. Oh, Lord, open the eyes of my heart that I would see it. Open the eyes of my heart so that I see you more readily, your presence in my life, so that I understand more so your purpose for my life, and so that I allow you to help me to accomplish all of this through the power, your power, that you display in my life and through my life. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord, this is a beautiful prayer, but it is a prayer and all that you and I, that we all need to be able to, to fully embrace. Paul realized what he had made of his life before he had a personal relationship with you. 
and what his life had now become because of having a pur purposeful relationship with you. And he realized that there wasn't even any comparison between the two. So much that he was willing to just throw the other away, counting it, as he said, as but dumb, so that he might fully embrace that which had been revealed to him. And now his prayer is, and my prayer is for your church today, even as I would pray it with myself in mind for all those who are listening in today, that you would open our understanding and grant us wisdom that we might know you better, that we might understand who we are in you better, and we might live in light of that through the power of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. As we continue to worship our Lord and, and as we close our service today and, and doing so, let us worship him with our gifts, with our tithes and our offerings. Would you stand with me at this time and I'll share a scripture with you. We'll dismiss with a, a prayer of dedication and an addiction. This comes from First Chronicles, from chapter 29 and verse 9. It says, The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. May we all be a leader and an example to one another as we offer our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord today as we offer him our time and our talents as well. Father, thank you for, again, bestowing upon us the means by which we are able to serve you, to be your witnesses, to share with the world the good news that you have so freely poured out upon our lives through your son, Jesus. We pray that you would accept the gifts that we offer this day, our tithes and our offerings, Lord, that you will bless those who offer them, that they might be able to continue to grow, that you would bless the gifts that are offered, that they might be multiplied in such a way to promote that which is your kingdom here in this world for your glory and the good of all. Dismiss us now in your spirit. We'll give you the praise for this through Jesus Christ, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. You're dismissed. Thank you.